All right, let's get into it. The top of the agenda, it is a Thursday night blockbuster. It features the previous two premiers and they do have some rich recent history between them. And on at least one side of the coin, there is a growing sense of urgency. They keep talking about they've got time, they've got time. They may run out of time if they don't start winning. It's not easy to pull Geelong apart. Well, this year it has been. They're just slightly off. They just haven't been able to get it right this season. We understand that some things have gone against us and we haven't delivered as well as we could have, but that doesn't preclude us doing it from here on in. Siren sounds, Melbourne win by four. What a game. We come off the back of a really good result against Collingwood. That gives us great belief internally about where we're going and what's possible. We want to make sure we continue that momentum now. We play one of the really good teams in the competition and competitors lean into those moments. They're the reigning premier and they're the best team in it until proven otherwise. So, and we know what we're up against. We feel like we're in a good position to take on that challenge. The way I feel now about the rest of the season, a little bit daunting if you focus on the longer term, but hugely exciting if you focus on what we can do in the moment. Tomorrow night at GMHBA Stadium, Fox's coverage starts at 6.30. Opening siren roulette at 7.20 tomorrow night for Thursday night footy. The teams were going to tell a story here, Robbo, yep. and so they have when they landed. The Cats get back Reece Stanley, who hasn't played since gather round, so he got the fractured eye socket, he required surgery. The Cats badly needed a first-choice ruckman, and they have one. Patrick Dangerfield and Jack Bowes, who was the sub last week, so Dangerfield uh, is on track to play next week against the Swans. And in fact, well, he'd said yesterday he wasn't actually ruling this game out, but wiser heads well, prevailed. Have you ever had a fractured rib or a cracked rib? And I haven't had a punctured lung. Well, like we'll ask the boys about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if he got up this week, God, he'll be man. back soon enough. And for Melbourne, so no Clayton Oliver. So this is four games now missed, and he's been on the cusp for the past three. He misses off the bye as well. Harrison Petty last played in round nine. Um, Spargo's been omitted and Joey's been studying the, the Melbourne small forwards. Mm -hmm. So he's got a bit to say on that front when we get to the watch list and Tomlinson <laughs> loses his place. I'm not sure that Tomlinson's out of the team. We'll find out what's going on with the sub uh, tomorrow night, but we'll, we'll go to the Cats first. <clears throat> we, we have been on watch for the Cats, I reckon, from about round one. Yeah. We really have and, you know, Everyone has spoken about it. Listen to Geordie then and, and, and Joey talking about it. They are not the side of last year. Now, the reasons are personnel, injury, had the recruits come in and played to a level that maybe we expected them they should have, they could have, could have got to. I don't think they have. The midfield's been depleted. Um, everyone says it starts and ends in the midfield, and the midfield hasn't been great. And their forward line, and you know, now Jeremy Cameron's been under a little bit of scrutiny this week about his performances over the last four or five weeks, and so he should be. He's one of the best players in the game. So it's an enormous game for Geelong, and that doesn't have to be said. This selection, non-selection, of, um, of Clayton Oliver, this to me is one of the most bewildering, mysterious player selection, non-selections of the year. Now, he did, do, uh, he did hurt a hamstring. Did you commentate that night? Uh, yeah, he back against... Port. Port, round 10, I think it was. It? He did hurt his hamstring, because he, but for, to be so close and then to get a, 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 um, a blister infection that required four days in the hospital. My God, what did it do? Do you have gangrene or something? So then to come back and he said, no, and they haven't picked him again? I think it's just really, it's a mysterious injury. Maybe we, we'll try and look for, the, for things under rocks these days, but... Um, Maybe we'll find out one day it was worse than what it was. But they're not telling us at the moment, but he's, he's not playing. The demon side of things, they've had the, the big win against Collingwood to plant their flag, which is the one I think we were all waiting for. On the games of the year, mate. Yep, and now to back it up. So they've got a recent win against Geelong in an after-the-siren thriller. Uh, they, they have won big games down there in the past. It's loaded with recent history and key finals as well, and some of that's been heavily tilted in Melbourne's favour. Yeah, they're, they're, they're in another interesting case study. We'll be, we'll be getting into the run home now. Remember when they got beaten by Fremantle, the MCG. We were questioning, what's, where is Melbourne? Have they got the substance to go all the way? And then they come out and knock over Collingwood again, the games of the year. Strong game, fierce on the body, 
You had to stand up your counter when Collingwood were coming at him with everything they got. It was an, an excellent game of football to win, and they, and they did it. They, they, they go down to Geelong and lose this game. The doubts will just come from us and probably from them. God, we can't, we can't get it done, we can't get it done. They have to get it done. They just have to. But so did Geelong. This is why it's a, a wonderful game. Yeah, but so this is one of Geelong's big wins in the back end mm-hmm. of last year when they were testing to see what they were going to be. They beat Melbourne. I'm pretty sure that was a Thursday night too. If not, it was a Friday night. Uh, so they reconvened at a pretty good time in round 15. Yeah. I, I wrestled with selection for the, for the team, for who I was going to, to pick this. Geelong and Geelong, they got beaten by the Giants down there. Yep. So you can't, you can't go with Geelong with any confidence. I know you do, but I couldn't pick Geelong. There's too many spot fires yep. everywhere. But it can click. You don't hear, you don't hear Scotty say, you know, you know, if you look long term, it's daunting. But it's hard not to look long term at round 15. He goes, oh, they're exciting in the now. Yeah, it will be exciting running out tomorrow night. If it's not daunting now, if they lose tomorrow night, what's it going to be after tomorrow night? Yeah. Well, Worse than daunting. They'll be, what, six and eight if they lose tomorrow <coughs> night. So... I don't know if he's coming back from that. Mm. And if they... I'll say it again. If they win the premiership from, from now, from this point onwards, it'll be one of the great premierships in the, in the last 50 years. For Chris Scott, it's a marker of his coaching days. He reaches 300 games in charge. The all-time at Geelong is Red Shickey with 304. So he's going to click that off in the in the coming month. He's got the phenomenal win-loss. He's got the awesome record of top four finishes. He's got the two flags and he's only missed the finals once and they're in this tooth and nail struggle. Remember when we were growing up and you know, people our age at home will remember, it was the Reg Hickey stand. Yeah. And if you didn't follow Geelong, all you knew that Reg Hickey was this famed coaching figure at Geelong. And now in our lifetime, we're going to to see a gentleman come along and take the mantle off Reg Hickey of of Geelong's greatest ever coach. Mm. It's exciting. Yeah. It's, it's a great accomplishment. It's monumental. It really is a great accomplishment for Chris. Eddie, you're our eyes on the Cats. What do you see right now as against what you saw last year? To be honest, Jared, I don't know, to be honest, what, what you're going to expect from them compared to last year. Um, you know, they lost against St Kilda in round nine and then they win, went on to win 16 in a row, plus the grand final. And, and this year, they're, they're sitting 10, six wins, seven losses, and, you know, they, they're not playing that consistent footy. And I don't think it's, it's the hunger. I, I feel like the hunger's not there anymore. Like, I listened to an interview that Tom Atkins did last year against Port Adelaide when they went over there and won, and he said he feels like he's playing on the edge, like he's going to get dropped every single game and he's one of their best midfielders and I feel like that's went away a bit and the injuries yes they, they had a lot of injuries you know Patrick Dangerfield played a lot of great footy through the year I was out with a hamstring comes back in get a punctured ribbon and lung and that's just unlucky so they got a big game tomorrow night but yeah it is tough and, and to see you know Chris I don't think he was angry Robbo I, I thought he was just I didn't pulling, think he was angry at Jeremy Cameron he's he, he just pulling him aside and just saying listen we need you you're, you're the greatest player almost in the competition so. he was angry at his team though yeah, you can see and that. He had every right to that. be angry with his team. Did anyone, did you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And he's had every right to put it on him and he was really trying to... But Je- Jezza has to get out of a bit of a hole. Like, he's one of the best players in the game. He's kicked, you know, five, six goals in six weeks. He's only one player, but that's why he's on the big bucks. We really need you, Josh Bruce. We really need you. That's it. Jeremy Cameron, we, uh, we really do. And when, when he's not playing well, especially in the forward half, they, he's got the licence to go up in the midfield in a couple of centre bounces. Get going, get the balls in your hand to get yourself some confidence. So Will they win? I'm going tomorrow night down at GMHB. I didn't ask you if you were going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, 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 he's just straight out. I think, I think they will. I think down Do home. They, they played the last, last game there was GW West. They didn't win down at home, but I think they will win. Well, they, look at their home. They got Melbourne at home, they got Sydney up in their SCG, then they got North at home, Bombers at home, and then Brizzy up at Gabba. So they've got a reasonably good run. So there needs a start from tomorrow night, though. Yep. What's your view on the Cats? Uh, no, I don't think they'll play finals this this year. I think um, I think just they're they're too far gone, and I can't see them winning seven or eight in the in in this run in this run home. So unfortunately, I think they'll miss. Melbourne, you've identified an issue. Yeah, we're just going to keep a watch on Melbourne because they are one team that don't have an issue defensively. But the concern for Melbourne is going to be offensively because. 
Coming off the bye now, we take a look at their season this year. So the first nine rounds, they're averaging 107 points in the competition, which was first. The last month, even though they've gone two, two and two, that's dropped to 69 points a game. So if you remember back to last year when they won their first 10, averaging 94 points, and then for the back end of the year when they really struggled, scoring dried up, and they averaged 74 points a game. So it's a concern. I just want to keep it on watch. They don't overdo their focus on their defence, which we think is elite, and is probably going to win them a premiership. They've still got to find the balance. And I'm putting it squarely, and I know accuracy's been a big part of it this year, but I'm putting it squarely on the small forwards for Melbourne because they are the ones that have had the significant drop-off from the first nine weeks to the last. So those four players were averaging between them uh, just over five goals a game uh, in those first nine rounds. That's dropped to just under two goals a game combined in the last four weeks. And one of the biggest factors has been their ground ball inside forward 50. So they were a top four ground ball team in their forward 50 over those first nine weeks. It's now dropped, particularly the last two weeks, to 17th in the competition. And I just want to show a couple of examples of what I think has happened. It looks like they've become a little bit reactive as small forwards and focusing too much on defending rather than actually trying to kick a goal. So this ball at the start of the year, to be fair, was going to the top of the square. But Pickett and Chandler, in particular, are already standing in positions to play cover, to basically defend the corridor and defend exits. Instead of attacking the ball front and square and trying to win contests. There's not a lot of movement around this ball. Even though Melbourne have got so many numbers in there, they're not really looking like they're trying to score when it hits the ground. It's like they're trying to lock the ball in their forward 50. And I just reckon you've got to strike the balance because particularly this guy, Robbo, who is a match winner, he is electrifying. And we saw it in the first nine weeks of the season. He was on fire. Now he's just sort of hovering. And this is what you can do. So this is almost the identical spot to where Cozzy Pickett was in the last contest. Look at Toby Green. He's thinking, no, no, I'm going to read the ball, get front and square, kick a goal. I want to see Cozzy Pickett. I want to see Chandler get back to the form of the start of the year and get more dynamic around have the ground ball inside 50. Those stats from number one to number 16, yeah. have they improved their defence and sacrificed a little bit of their Potentially, the ground ball offense? stuff. They're, they're, have they gone too far? That's what they've got to make sure the they have way. the balance of. That's their biggest issue because last year they probably lost the balance of their offence. They've got to be careful they don't do it again this year.